So this is the Zippo, pretty much iconic piece of outdoors kit. Um, you know, whatever you do, whether you're a smoker, or a hunter, or a prepper, or you know, for me, I was a uh, beekeeper, and that's what made me fall in love with these things. Um, so, made in the USA. Uh, company was founded in 1932. Anti-secret fighter. This is a brass case one. I think it's a commemorative edition thing. Um, so, you know, I don't know if you can see that. 19 on the base of it. 1932 to 1992. Company was founded in 1932, and I think the first lighters came out in 1933, and um, they they actually became very very popular during World War Two with American um, you know, U.S. soldiers, and um, have remained so ever since. Uh, this now. So, you know, that's your standard, you know, Zippo today, stainless steel, uh, still being sold. Um, you know, you, you get a Zippo and, you know, very good chance it's going to last you many, many years, if not your entire life. Um, very reliable, uh, refillable, so um, you, they can be refilled from multiple sources. Uh, now you do have you know, your standard everyday lighter fuel. You know, Zippo has their own product. Ronson has a product, and they all work in the Zippo lighters. But they also um, we will refill from gasoline. Um, I'm not recommending you do that, but it, it's definitely pretty sure that's what they used to do in uh, World War Two. Um, there's uh, you know, all sorts of other fluids that will work to refill these with. Uh, in a pinch, I've actually used um, ether, which is starting fluid. Uh, it worked really well, but it doesn't last very long. So, you know, a few hours after you fill it, it seems like it's already evaporated. But, you know, if you need to start a fire, um, you know, any, anything can, not anything, but a lot of things will work to... Um, to fill these up with, and I'll actually go into that a bit later, show you a couple of the things that you know, I've used. Um, so, uh, they will last a very long time, and um, very reliable, but they do bugger up from time to time. Uh, not much that goes wrong with them. You pretty much have a device that sparks, and... Um, yeah, it creates a spark which sets flame to um, a fuel soaked rag. Now the I'll pull that out. So this is that one there. Um, so the fuel soaked rag, whatever fuel you happen to be using, is inside the zippo there. I'm gonna pull this one apart. Just to show you. So what we got there is the uh, the screw that holds the so it's got a spring. It's got a little gadget thing there. I don't know uh, that butts up against the. Um, the flint and uh, I don't know if you can see that little screw on the end that's just what screws into the base there now in here I should have a flint of course now it's not going to come out for me
piece of flint may be so small as to be not findable. This one here needs a flint as well. Let's see if I can pull the old one out. So once again, it's got the screw, the spring, <coughs> this little piece here that pushes onto the flint. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, that's the flint there. Very, very tiny. That's all that's left of it. And that little piece there. You see that? Yeah. So yeah, that little piece of flint is all that's left inside that one. Uh, so, I need to show you how to replace the flint. Um, now, you probably can still buy the flint um, in a lot of different places, but these old big lighters, you know, once they run out of gas, they're pretty handy to steal a flint out of it as well. So, you're going to just want to so this one's it's all out of gas. Um, when you take it apart, just watch the spring doesn't fly it too far away. Okay. And there's the flint from the big lighter. The piece there. There's the spring from the big lighter. That's actually all I'm gonna need from this. So, um, the one I'm replacing is this one here. Now what you'll find, if you just try and put the, the big lighter flint, will fit in, but you'll find if you try and screw it in with the original equipment, uh, you just won't, there won't be enough, um, oh, right there I can screw it in, but if I screw that in far enough, that I could slip this back on, uh, the flint wouldn't, you know, the flint would be too tight. So you just got to shorten that flint a little bit because, to make a long story short, the Zippo flint is quite a bit shorter than the big flint. So a um, pair of side cutters. I've made actually two flints out of that. And then I can put the flint back in there, refit my spring, screw, and plunger. Hopefully, that's enough off it. Should have a good, yeah, it's better. A good, reliable spark then. So what's this? So yeah, it's more than twenty years old. Okay, so that one I just replaced the flint in it easy to do. Uh, the only other thing I'll say, now if you do get into a pinch, um, okay the only other thing, you know, as far as the spark is concerned, um, you know, you might break the spring or it might just rust, whatever. And you can actually use the, the big springs as well, but you'll probably just want to, let me just adjust that so you can see it better. So you can actually use the, the big spring. The big spring will fit inside it, but it is too long. So you might just have to shorten the big spring if you needed to reuse that. If you, need, if you needed to use the big spring in the Zippo, it's just a simple matter of cutting it. Of course, these ones aren't going to work. Okay. So it's just a matter of trimming up the, the big spring to, you know, as long as you need to replace the Zippo. Okay, um, so that's the sparker, the, 
the flint. Uh, the other thing that you may want to be able to replace is the actual um, um, see if this got flint here. Yeah, it's got a good spark. This one here. So I'm going to pull this out and show you how to adjust the wick uh, or replace the wick if you need to. So it's just a matter of remove the uh, spring. There's the flint. Not much flint left in that either. I guess that's a good thing. It means I've been using them. Um, make sure that's in the camera. So you pull off this little piece here. Just like the base. And um, pull out all this filling. Now that filling is just cotton, basically. Uh, like cotton wool buds, if you had to find a bit more to replace. Actually, not much left of this wick either. A little bit. I mean, that probably still lasts me 10 years. Um, I'm going to pull it out and try and replace it with a easier to find. Um, okay, so there's the standard Zippo wick. Um, so I'll say about that. Is that um, it's just cotton thread and it's wrapped in a wire um, uh, a wire around the outside to give it more stiffness and um, I think that helps hold it upright helps hold it upright in here and also helps get it through that's actually the hardest part so the hole down the bottom you have to be able to get the wick through that hole and um, that's actually the hardest part. So, all right, so that's the wick that I just pulled out of this one. This here is second hand, but that's your standard, standard length Zippo wick, I think. Okay, so, um, doesn't make too much longer, I think, if you were to buy them from Zippo, this is about the length you'd get. And so this wick here is about halfway through its lifespan. But anyway, if you can't buy a Zippo wick, uh, any cotton thread will work. Uh, there may, uh, may be some other natural fiber threads as well that will work. Um, jute may work. There's some jute twine I've seen that would probably work. But uh, I would say cotton's probably the best. So, um, what I'm going to use to get these wicks, these threads, through the lighter, through that hole in the lighter. You know, that little tiny hole, I've got to try and get these threads through them. It's not that easy to do, but I'm going to use a bit of copper wire from some um, automotive hookup wire. So I've already stripped it down with the strippers. I'm just going to pull out a thread. Now I'm going to wrap it around. All I'm doing is making a, um, a simple way to pull it through that tiny hole. So this blade out piece at the end, 
I need to try and wrap that down if I can. not pretty but that'll probably do the job at least for the first layer so then I get that fine copper wire and I slide it down through this hole and I pull it up okay so then the wick is now through but uh, so this wick is pretty thin now that'll work that'll definitely work but I want to actually um, put a little bit more wick through there, so I'm going to redo that with another piece of copper wire. This is going to be a little bit harder, especially trying to demonstrate it. But it's the same deal, I'm just going to use the copper wire to wrap those threads together. I'm just going to wrap it around and around. It's getting a bit tricky for me now. I don't want any edges in the wick, in the cotton thread that are going to catch on that hole on the edge or it just won't pull through so I have to wrap this down quite tightly. If you're quite nimble with your fingers maybe that's not an issue but I'm finding my fingers are getting bigger and bigger. These type of little tiny jobs are getting harder and harder. So, I hope that'll be enough. So now I put two of these threads together, wrapped them with the wire, and I'm hoping I've got it wrapped tight enough that I can slip both of them through this hole. So let's pull this one back through because it slipped. And there's that. And, oh, I think it's caught. Nope, it went through. So now I've got both those threads through. Okay, so I've got always I've got both those threads through. See both of them joined together, thin copper wire, plenty of tail. And then all I gotta do, actually all this, all this copper thread, oh cotton, not copper, can just be stuffed in here. I'm kind of simulating that I have repacked the whole thing. Now, if I was totally, uh, you know, making do, I could actually pack this whole thing with this cop with this cotton. I could repack that whole thing with cotton thread. But I do have cotton wool buds, so I can pack them in there as well. And that's probably the better thing to do. Side here. Um, there's actually no reason I don't need to replace this cotton. I'm just doing it to show you how it could be done. Um, the only time that I've really had to 
do something like this with a Zippo is when I tried refilling it with something it didn't like to be filled with and would not evaporate. And I think it was 70% uh, uh, alcohol. So it had a lot of water in it. And so I think if I remember rightly, um, when I did it, it still worked, you know, so I used 70% alcohol, uh, uh, they call it Everclear, um, maybe isopropyl as well worked. So I think it worked initially with the alcohol, um, but it pretty quickly, uh, the moisture evaporated, sorry, the alcohol evaporated and, um, left just the moisture and it took forever for it to dry out and I just gave up and I just pulled all the cotton cotton wadding out and replaced it. Um, so I forgot to, got to put the flint back in. That's half that flint from that I just cut. That goes in. Put my spring back. screwed all the way down so that's a good sign let's see if it sparks it now sparks new flint new cotton so what am I going to refill it with hmm well oh I won't use that just for giggles Just for giggles, so I'm going to lift up this piece here, and I'm just going to do a little spray. Now that there's starting fluid. I'm just simulating making do. Um, haven't trimmed off that yet. Trim this off. Okay, so I've trimmed it up, filled it, placed the wadding, and fully functional Zippo. It's actually working really good. Yeah, the uh, starter fluid works really good. And I mentioned this before. It works really good. It just doesn't last very long. Um, so you might fill it and then you know, five hours later it'll be out of fuel again. Um, but your other um, materials that you might use to fill it with, such as your lighter fluid, I don't remember trying it. Maybe I will if I can find some. But uh, kerosene, I believe, would work really well as well. Uh, kerosene, gasoline, um, um, pure alcohol, such as denatured alcohol that you use for cleaning and stuff, would work. Um, and there's probably a ton of other things too. Uh, clean burning, you know, if you are going to be using it in an enclosed environment you might be interested in something that's a little more clean burning than gasoline or kerosene but um, for an emergency out in the wilderness um, there's a lot of things that will work to help you start a fire